What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Jody Smoke the Mad Scientist and we are back again bringing you bills that are cut from a different cloth. Please like and subscribe and visit my channel and check out all my other build content. Today we have a monster of a PvP build and I mean an absolute monster. The enemy team are going to be thinking that you are a hacker or they're going to be scratching your head thinking how have this just been one tapped or deleted in less than a second. It's great for rogue manhunts and it is a viable option against those pesky true patriot, pestilence and efficient users as you can deal so much damage output in such a small window that they won't have time to pop a medkit, I can assure you. What we'll do, we'll jump straight in with the build. We are using firewall for three specific reasons. One for the cluster grenades, which I think because of the area effect are the most OP grenades that you can use to deal damage with in PvP. We're pairing that off with the shield for the extra 10% bonus damage that we are getting to enemies who are out of cover. And of course you do get that med kit which provides 200% health and also 200% armor. Like I said, paired with efficient it is even more efficient but even without um, that specific talent it is a generally OP med kit or armor kit and probably the one I would recommend using for PvP. To start off with the build, alongside using the AMP which I'm just using for enemy skills because it is important for this build that you do get close quarters and this does allow you to drop down them stinger hives if, uh, if they are there which is probably the biggest obstacle that comes in your way with regards to dealing with close, quarter, quam, close quarters combat in this uh, with this build. We are using two best in class the reason we're using two best in class is simply because they are best in class damage to outer cover and damage to targets to armor this does pair off nicely with the sweet dreams which is also a benefit of this build and of course we are using a vector because I do believe it is the best SMG that you can use. With regards to this I would know I would probably get rid of critical hit chance if I could but I'd like to roll a critical hit damage. It is pivotal to this build that you do stack critical hit chance and critical hit damage as long as pairing it with the two talents I'll show you in a minute. If you don't do this then you won't have the ability with the sweet dreams to be able to one shot an enemy which is pretty much the only reason I think this build is so viable in conflict considering it is a six red build and a lot of their uh, players now in conflict are running um, a full blue set but we'll go in with the um, the mask we're using a shotgun a uh, badger tough mask for the uh, shotgun damage sorry we've got a fantastic roll here 10% status 6% chance and 15% damage um, I would note that you can change status for something else but I do want to increase the longevity of the time that my AMP knock shields and other things down which is why I'm rolling status rather than something as opposed to hazard and I do believe if you are running a 6 red build with such low armor I don't think extra hazard protection is going to save you in the long run as you do get killed pretty quickly so the aim of this build is to kill enemies when you see them before they can kill you and obviously if you do have a bit of range then it is most ideal to use cover to cover to do that um, and shorten the gap in between them. We are running a two-piece Solikov for the critical hit damage. We are pairing this off with Gunslinger. Gunslinger is weapon swap and increases total weapon damage by 20% for 5 seconds and the buff slots for 5 seconds if you swap while it is active. But I can assure you it'll take about 5 seconds to shoot your clip and reload so if you can use this effectively you can synergize this and um, maximize the effectiveness of this talent and keep gunslinger running up for as long as possible for the other we have the backpack and we are pairing this with versatile i think gunslinger and versatile is the best damage weapon combination you can have especially paired with the shotgun and the smg as these do seem to be lacking in base damage numbers compared to something like a rifle or an ar and it boosts that damage to the point where it is a very effective and viable option to use but of course you do need to use an SMG and a shotgun to gain that 35% damage bonus and it is ampli amplified bonus so it is multiplicative which is why this build sit hits so hard moving on to the last piece we are using a grouper to try and optimize the crit damage we are rolling crit damage crit chance and weapon damage onto there like i said the only two pieces i rolled status on are them two i don't think it is necessary to have so much status on but you can also pair it with the vindictive or the perfectly vindictive i do have a perfectly vindictive but i'm using the vector specifically for the extra fire rate i also have a vector here with fast hands and um, you could also use that as a synergize as well with the critical hits and 
increases the downtime your reload speed but because you are swapping your weapons over a lot i don't think that is so massively necessary but it does help when you accidentally forget to do a full reload having that extra bit of time that you've stacked can help you ensure that your gun is actually reloaded when you swap back to your smg from your shotgun <clears throat> with that said you can also put someone else damage related uh, i like vindictive personally as it buffs your team especially when you're playing contact and i always think that if you can someone can run a coyote or a tardigrade maybe not in pvp uh, the tardigrade specifically but if someone can run some kind of buff then you can synergize and maximize your overall group damage which is why i'm running that I did note in my last video that I don't like over optimizing critical hit chance to the point where I'm losing effectiveness on the build. With that said, if I could, I'd probably change the pet rov to critical hit chance if I had uh, the option to do so. But I mean, everything else you show you the stats, it is pretty high. 55%, I would, I would, I would settle at 50 for an extra 12% critical hit damage, taking that up to 162. But I mean, as it is, it is also quite effective it is as you do want to maximize your critical hit chances um, not just for obviously the boosted damage that you get but also for the fast times if you're using it and it will also synergize with vindictive well if you are using that the only other shotgun I'd recommend using is the TAC SG but the damage output is less and you won't get a one shot but you will get that repeatedly extra fire and it can be a little better for people who don't have maybe the best aim what we're going to do, we're going to quickly jump into a conflict build, a uh, conflict game. I'll show you a little idea of how this build runs. <clears throat> a couple of alternatives that I would mention with this build if you wanted to. Like I said, you could drop the status and go hazard. Drop a bit of chance also and drop it down to about 40 in case someone's running coyote or to maximise the effectiveness of your um, vindictive. But I would also recommend what I was just about to show you there, the ninja knee pads. The ninja knee pads are probably the the best pvp shotgun exotic that you can use because or maybe for lmgs but it's probably a little better for exotic and a little trick with the knee pads as well you don't actually have to perform a cover to cover move simply jumping over a cover is sufficient to reload it um this is probably the only downfall of this build i would say specifically is that the shotgun has eight mags and it is a single reload of 4.5 second reload time however i will normally note because this shotgun hits so hard and because i can normally effectively and when you run in con conflict there's normally people around other people around it's highly unlikely you're going to come up against four agents at a time but even if you are you do have two mags per agent and your gunslinger can run long enough so you can thingy and you've also got your vector which can reload quick as well so which is why I decided to take the ninja knee pads off with regards to this build and optimise more critical hit chance and critical hit damage and of course DPS which is where we are using the best in class gloves. We're going to give you a little quick demonstration now. Uh, hopefully I don't get melted which would be funny because the, this, like I said this is the lack of the one downside of all red and yellow builds is that you don't have the survivability 700 to 800k armor isn't a fantastic bit of armor to run especially when you're running up with a true pestilence who can a true patriot with a pestilence who can have an excess of 2 million damage and do that constantly tick over damage time so i would advise if you are running six reds or six yellows that you pay a bit of attention to where you are and your cover and try to use it more effectively to minimize your incoming damage but we're going to jump around here, we've got two lads from uh, this clan here, so hopefully we'll be doing alright. By the looks of it, he looks like he's running a 6 blue build, and most likely 2 period. Is that a pestilence I say? Yeah, it's a pestilence on his back. What we'll do, I would recommend with this build trying not to be too gung-ho. It is best to use cover to your advantage and wait for enemies to come to you or use cover to cover like i said i am doing effectively so you can minimize the incoming damage from a certain distance you can then um, jump in there like i said i'll click this now other people are shooting them of course we'll try and get an enemy who is by himself there's an enemy down there what we're going to do we're going to jump down there oops and i got shot too quick that was my own fault but that is a prime example of how you should be more effective with your cover. I probably should have popped my shield out there first, or I probably should have done a roll before I jumped into the cover. But you can see the, the floor 
that this build does have. It's only got two and a, just over a half, two and a half bars of there. We'll try and get a one-on-one -on -one with a person. Hopefully there's someone around there so we can get one. I'm going to try and peel off from the crowd. There's a guy there. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly switch over to our shotgun. Hopefully we're in decent proximity. Oh, that was the wrong gun. But I mean, as you can see, that hits. We'll switch back over to the shotgun, and that's a one-tap there. The guy had half armor, so that's not a prime example. But as you can see, I mean, I didn't take much effort to clear him at all, and it is helpful against other enemies. Like I said, I would use this moment and opportunity to reload. I don't like to keep this below five reloads. There's a little better example there. There's AMT.